Hello everyone, this is Isidore and this is my review about Damned. Damned is a cooperative survival horror game. Each game has 5 players, of which 4 play human survivors and 1 plays the monster. The survivors look different but are otherwise identical, while the monster player can play as one of 3 different monsters, each with its own playstyle. The survivors play in a manner similar to other horror games, like Amnesia, in that their primary goal is to find keys and other tools that allow them to open doors and get through the level, eventually letting the survivors get all the way to the escape room on each map. If even one of the survivors makes it there, the survivor team wins. However, the survivors have no weapons of any kind, only carrying a flashlight. If they want to survive against the monster, they have to move fast, hide, and avoid trapping themselves in dead-end rooms. Each of the different monsters plays very differently, but all three share the goal of having to kill all of the survivors before they escape. I personally adored the monster playstyle, simply because they were amazingly fun to play as and horrifying to play against. The first monster is the Lurker. The Lurker has two distinct forms, a ghost form and a physical form. In the ghost form, the Lurker moves very fast and it can activate traps, which are objects on the map that make a noise when a survivor moves past it. The Lurker can't see any of the survivors while in ghost mode, nor can he see any manipulatable objects such as doors, keys or other stuff. As a result, the only way the Lurker can figure out where the survivors are is by listening carefully for any traps being triggered. By the same token, the survivors also have no idea where the Lurker is, since he is invisible while in ghost form, but they do hear creepy noises if he passes through a survivor, and if they hear a trap going off, they can be sure that he'll have heard them and that he's on his way. After charging up, the lurker can shift into his physical form. He can only sustain this horrifying form for a limited period of time, during which he can see and hear the map just like the survivors can. He can also swing his claws, instantly killing survivors that get hit. However, he moves slowly, can be hindered by doors, and the survivors get an audio cue that he's turned physical. On top of that, his eyesight is pretty terrible in his physical form, so survivors may be able to hide from the lurker by turning off their flashlights and hiding in the dark. Then there's the Phantom. The Phantom, unlike the Lurker, is always capable of attacking the survivors and can always be seen by the survivors. However, the Phantom is nearly completely blind, incapable of seeing doors, objects or the survivors. The exception is when the survivors suddenly make a lot of noise by sprinting or if they touch the Phantom, then he sees them as a white silhouette. The Phantom also has amazing hearing and can hear the survivors' footsteps and any traps they set off. Speaking of traps, the Phantom doesn't have to trigger specific traps, but rather part of the traps on the map are automatically triggered when a survivor walks by. As a result, playing as or against the Phantom is much like playing a game of hide and seek, where the survivors try to be as silent as possible while the Phantom constantly tries to hear the survivors move around and hone in on their location. Lastly, my personal favorite, Mary. Mary is a little girl in a white dress with her hair hanging in front of her face. Mary is always visible and sees the world just like the survivors, seeing all doors, survivors, lights and objects. She moves really slowly and in her regular form has no attacks and cannot harm the survivors in any way. However, Mary continuously builds up energy, which she can use to teleport around the map. As a result, you never know where she's going to show up. Once she's completely filled her reserve of energy, she can frenzy. When she does this, she lets out a loud scream and her vision turns red. She begins moving extremely fast and gets to rapidly swish her claws around. Due to her speed, Mary has the potential of killing all the survivors in one frenzy. However, Mary builds up energy only very slowly unless she can get close to the survivors, which causes her energy to build up much more quickly. Survivors can also close the doors and then lean against them to keep her out. The maps are all very well designed, requiring different strategies from both the survivors and the monster. Plus, they're all extremely dark, which lends itself to choices that have to be made. Do I turn on my flashlight so I can get a good look at my surroundings, or do I keep it off so the monster doesn't see me? Do I take these batteries now so I can keep my flashlight at full power for this next room, or do I leave them behind and pick them up when my flashlight starts running dry and I really need them? 
Do I sit perfectly still to avoid the phantom, or do I try to crawl away from it, with the risk of it hearing me? I really adore this system of choice, despite the game being relatively simple otherwise. The fact that the monster is being played by a human player is also a lot of fun, since it makes the monster unpredictable and thus all the more dangerous. I wouldn't want to play any of the Amnesia games a second time, simply because there wouldn't be a point. You already know where and when all the monsters spawn, which takes out much of the scare. In Damned, you can play the same map a dozen times and never get quite the same experience. And I praise the game for this. However, while the game does have a lot of potential for teamwork amongst the survivors, I do feel that the options for it are a little limited. Because there is a limited number of keys on the map, I always feel like I'm running behind the person that picked up the last found key, and act as bait so this person doesn't get eaten first. At the same time, you do have the ability to keep unlocked doors shut by leaning against it. This stops the monsters, except the phantom, from pushing them open, but only works if the door opens towards you. This means that you can have someone on door duty to keep the door shut, in case one of the monsters spawns outside. Otherwise, there is also spotting duty, where someone has to keep scanning the area for signs of the monster, warning his teammates if the monster is close. There are a few other things you can do to help your team, but I do feel like having a team isn't necessary in any way. You can potentially do the entire map on your own, and the only issue is that you'd have to be more careful about the monster, since if you die, then it's game over. The graphics for Damned are pretty outdated, but personally I didn't even notice this. The pitch blackness of each map does plenty to convey a sense of claustrophobia, and each of the monsters is definitely scary, regardless of whether or not it's visible. The music is amazing, and the switch that occurs in music when the monsters spawn or are spotted do a great job in making your heart race and inducing panic attacks. In short, I enjoyed Damned immensely. I haven't been this scared in ages, and I loved it. I kept wanting to jump back in there and see if I could outwit the monster this time. If any of you are fans of horror games, but want to enjoy that experience with several of your friends, I highly recommend Damned. It's worth every penny. This is Isidore, signing off.